So I've always played piano, I've always played keyboards, I've always wrote my own songs. And I've played music since I was six year old. Music's my life. I took up guitar when I was about 13, 14, and I left the piano behind a little bit. It was around about 15, 16 when I joined my first gigging band around local clubs and stuff. Then I was invited to put together a band called the Demon Brothers, and I ended up fronting that band. And we toured that for about three years till I was 21. And then on January 4th, I decided to go and visit a friend of mine in Tenerife in the Canaries. I mean, I was going to hang out there for a week or so, and I ended up landing some work over there. And I think in total, I was there for nine and a half years. When you go to Tenerife, obviously you can imagine the social environment over there is all sunshine and swimming pools and half-naked women and plenty of alcohol. And it sort of spiralled my drinking pretty much to near oblivion. That's when I started to realise I've got a problem with this thing, you know, because I can't function without it. And I'm about you in discretion. So it got pretty serious to the point where I was drinking pretty much 18 hours of every day. It wasn't just drinking socially, it was extreme drinking on every level. Bearing in mind I'm working what, two and a half, three hours a night maximum. Um, I've still got all day to get through where there's nothing else to do than sit around a pool drinking <laughs> or sit in a bar drinking. It's that, it's that holiday aspect of it, you know? And also, as, as time goes on over there and you meet and befriend new people, some come back six times a year, but as soon as they've flown off, the next flight in lands and there'll be somebody else. How you doing, Scott? Fancy a berry, fancy a chapito or a shot as we call it. But I knew my stomach wasn't right. I knew I hadn't really been eating, because you've got to remember when you're drinking a lot, you don't really eat loads. But I remember sitting there thinking, well, I'm a bit nervous about this blood test. And they took these bloods and the results came in and basically they explained to me my liver was swollen like 10 times the size it should be. And if I was to go back to Tenerife or continue drinking to the extent I was, I have been, I'll be lucky to be alive in five years. I have to aim for abstinence. Hence, I've made a big decision to enter into an alcohol recovery program. Don't you worry about the crush. Head on you Don't think you'll hear from me You know I'm all the you Don't think I'll be in touch Because you bring me down And I became too much So I'll see you around Out of my peripheral view I saw you in a custer next year the initial detox program, which is basically in bed for five to seven days, uh, they come and inject you the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with a thing called nalmapin, which is a drug to help with withdrawal and also regenerates your liver. It gives your liver everything it's been missing for all the years you've been drinking. It started way back when I was... Then the real work starts with 
the mental side of things. Anything can act as a trigger, you know, any places you normally go, any people you normally see and have a drink with. Basically every day of my life, there's a four hour stint there in the pub that has to be replaced with something to take your mind off it. Obviously I won't be able to go and play with the bands and be in clubs and pubs. And I've been told if I get into a situation like that and I feel any type of urge or I go for a beer, I'll just have to put the piano lid down, put my guitar down and walk out, even if it costs us me equipment, because it could end up costing us me life. Oh, but that's your style. Is that the reason why?